In the year 711, the Muslim armies of the Umayyad Caliphate invaded Hispania from North Africa. The Visigothic Christian Kingdom of Hispania was greatly weakened and the invaders quickly took over most of the peninsula. After consolidating their control over these territories, the Muslims ventured north, conquering southeastern Gaul and reaching the region of Aquitaine. Odo the Great, Duke of Aquitaine, threatened to the north by the Franks and to the south by the Muslims, allied himself with Manuza, Berber emir of the region located southeast of the Pyrenees and who had revolted against Abd al-Rahman al-Ghafiqi, Umayyad governor in Hispania. Al-Ghafiqi quickly defeated the rebel Manuza and, crossing into Gaul with a powerful army, confronted Odo near the Garan River. Odo was defeated and Bordeaux, the capital of Aquitaine, was sacked. Odo managed to flee and asked for help from his former enemies, the Franks. Charles Martel, leader of the Franks, accepted in exchange for Odo becoming a vassal. For the previous years he had been preparing an army to confront the Islamic threat and the time had come to do so. In the year Al-Ghafiqi's army continued its march north, confident in its victorious army and headed to sack the Abbey of St. Martin of Tours, at that time the most important in Western Europe. His army consisted of about 25,000 men, mostly cavalry. Charles advanced with his forces from the north and chose a place between Poitiers and Tours to cut off the Muslims. The site was very close to the confluence of the Clain and Vienne rivers. Al-Ghafiqi was surprised to find the Franks and therefore did not decide to attack immediately. He decided to study his enemies and for six days only a few skirmishes occurred. Charles knew the terrain well and his troops were more prepared to withstand the cold than his enemies, so he was in no hurry. He had spread out on a forested hill in close formation. Duke Odo, in command of the Frankish and Aquitanian cavalry, was hiding in a nearby forest with the intention of surrounding the Muslims when the battle began. In total, the Christian forces numbered about 20,000 men, with a few hundred horsemen. On October 10, 732, Al-Ghafiqi decided to engage in combat. We do not know if the decision was due to the confidence he had in his cavalry or the fact that the other option was to retreat and leave an enemy army behind him. The fact is that he gave the order to attack. His horsemen armed with swords, spears and bows charged uphill against the Franks with great impetus. Despite the ferocity of the attack, the cavalry failed to break the Christian formation. The Muslims were not used to their enemies holding their charge but the Frankish soldiers were disciplined and had been well trained. A new advance by Arab troops up the hill caused the fighting to resume. The rider's charge was hampered by the irregular terrain, with trees and bushes everywhere. This attack ended in another Muslim retreat. After resting briefly, the Islamic cavalry charged again with the support of their infantry. They were looking for a weak point through which they could penetrate and disrupt the Frankish formation. This time some horsemen managed to break through the ranks of the Franks, however they were defeated by the reserve troops that Charles Martel had planned in the second line of the formation.
Trusting in the superiority of his cavalry, Al Ghafiki had the horsemen charge again and they engaged in fierce combat. A rumor began to circulate among the Muslim troops that the missing Christian cavalry were behind them and were seizing the loot they had obtained in Bordeaux. Several units of horsemen turned around and headed towards their camp to defend it. The rest of the Muslim army thought they were fleeing and began to retreat, abandoning the fight. Seeing this the Franks began to advance in an orderly manner. Al Ghafiki tried to stop the retreat by advancing with his personal guard but he was surrounded by Christian infantry and killed. At that moment, Duke Odo, surrounding the forest where he was hiding, attacked the Muslims from the rear, pushing them against the Frankish infantry in a pincer maneuver. Trapped between two fronts and with their commander dead, confusion spread among the Islamic ranks. The slaughter continued for hours, only slowed by the approach of night. The surviving Muslims managed to break through and return to their camp. Charles, however, did not trust him and decided not to pursue the enemy army, remaining in his defensive positions on the hill. The Arabs still had large numbers of troops and could be dangerous if they reorganized. The next day, fearing an ambush, Charles sent his scouts to investigate the enemy camp and upon returning was informed that the Muslims had abandoned their camp during the night and were heading south. The Arab army was retreating to Hispania, on the other side of the Pyrenees. This victory gave Charles the nickname Martel, Hammer, for the hard blow it dealt to Islamic expansion in Europe. The battle became a turning point in European history and in the struggle between the Christian and Muslim worlds in the Middle Ages as it preserved Christianity as the dominant faith on the continent. The Franks would definitively expel the Muslims to the south of the Pyrenees a few years later. The outcome of this battle allowed the Franks to consolidate their power in the region, laying the foundation for the future unification of France under the Carolingian dynasty. This dynasty would give rise to Charlemagne, grandson of Charles and Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire.